you know, as a hell of a boss fan, I can't help but point out uh, the fact that two of the bosses in this game are a peacock and an owl. I don't know, I just find that funny. It's total coincidence, I'm not saying, like, anything was inspired by anything, but still, anyways. Storm Owl. He left with a space fortress to conquer the air. I don't know why, but I love the way the narrator says his name. Anyways, it's almost not terribly difficult by any means, though there is one part that's kind of aggravating, if only because if you're not fast, you're likely going to miss the heart tank. Also, you can kill these, but I'd rather leave them alive. Ooh, you know, I know. An eagle ride armor. I had a mini stroke there. Anyways, uh, the charge shot on this thing can actually hit these while they're, uh, while you can stay down here and be safe. Unfortunately, the Eagle Ride Armor isn't in that many levels. I think it's in this level and one of the final levels. And that's about it. And also, I'm going to be ditching it here because, uh... Oh, right. If you're wondering why I'm using the Lightning Web here, according to the Mega Man Wiki, these guys are weak to that weapon. But it's not really terribly good, so... I don't want to be in the Ride Armor. And there's one sole reason for that, which you'll see in a minute, and that's because uh, the heart tank is coming up, and being in the ride armor with it, it's possible to get it in the ride armor, but it, it can be a little tricky. Yeah, as you can see, I've got it on my first try on multiple occasions before, but I've also missed it on multiple occasions and had to go back. Anyway, the aiming laser makes pretty decent work of these guys, only because you can stay low and still hit them. Uh, you know, as much as I think the aiming laser is cool looking, it's actually not terribly useful. It's not super damaging. Uh, and because of the really awkward aiming system, actually hitting things with it isn't very easy. You may have also noticed I'm actually shooting my, my buster at the same time as the aiming laser. That's because this game uh, and Mega Man 8, which came out around, around the same time, and I think uh, the other PS1 games as well, um, actually lets you shoot both your buster and your, uh, and a special weapon at the same time. It's not never, it's not really ever needed, but it's, it's doable. Ready. Anyways, uh, part two of the stage is definitely a lot less hectic. Because, uh, down here we've got, although I, these fucking things, which... I know that beam doesn't really do a whole lot of damage, but it still scares me just looking at it. Anyways, I'm getting the lightning web out here because you do need it for something up ahead, which if you've gone through this game and gotten all the upgrades, you'll know what I'm getting it for. Oh, oh that didn't work. Yeah, this section can be a bit of a pain in the ass, even with infinite ammo. Anyways, I didn't mean to skip through Light's dialogue here, but there are two arm upgrades over here. The first of these being the stock charge shot. Which I will at least show off. I'm not going to use it, but I'm going to show it off. Charge it up, and you can charge. You, you can store up to four charge shots. That's kind of cool. But, of course, we're going the plasma shot. With this arm part, you can fire the plasma shot, which is effective against stronger enemies. If the shot hits the opponent, plasma is generated, which will cause additional damage to the enemy. This arm module is changeable. Enter this capsule to change parts. Which, yeah, we're taking the, the Plasma Buster because this just makes um, most enemy encounters just snap right in half in terms of difficulty because look at that. I will at least show off this too. You can charge up to four blasts at a time with this arm module. It takes a while to charge, but you can fire a charged shot at any time you so wish with it. This arm module is also changeable. Enter this capsule to change parts. Now, I've heard tell that this module is actually decent against certain bosses. Also, I'm going to die here in a really stupid way. That always gets me. I don't know what it is about that part, but it always manages to kill me. Something about that jump. I don't get it. And I don't like it. Anyways, but hey, at least we have the plasma buster now because you don't have to you don't have to go get it again if you if you uh, miss out on it here. Or if you die in this section. I I'm I can't English, I'm sorry. 
Anyways, right up ahead is actually a mini boss, which almost seems designed for you to have grabbed the plasma buster by this point. Look at that! Look at how much that shaved off! Ow, that was really dumb. I just jumped straight into the fucking laser. But yeah, look at that. Look at how amazing that was. Oh, I fucking love the Plasma Buster. Maybe my favorite Arm Buster upgrade of the whole series. Though, uh, the Arm Buster upgrades in the first two games were also really cool. So. Anyways, I got the aiming laser here because this is, a uh, Owl's weakness. And he should be coming in in just a second now. There he is. How dare you destroy my unit! You'll pay for this with your life! Oh, he actually hit me! Wow, he actually got a chance to hit me! Oh, he hit me again! Yeah, not this time, Bastard. <laughs> Anyways, Owl's another boss who just folds in half of his weakness, although he actually managed to hit me a few times there. Wow, that's rare. Very rarely does Owl actually succeed in attacking before I kill him. Yeah, he still didn't put up much of a fight, but he at least got a couple hits in. <laughs> you know what, Owl? You fought valiantly. You're still an asshole, but you fought valiantly. <laughs> and... I don't really know how to feel about this green armor color. Fires vacuum cyclones left and right. Most effective when surrounded by the enemies and against Skyborne enemies. 